Today in this video we're going to talk about the variation of parameters method to solve differential equations. My example says find a particular solution to the given second order differential equation and then the equation is y double prime plus 9y equals tangent 3t. So since the function on the right hand side is not sine or cosine, you know you can't use the integrating factor method and you have to use variations of parameters instead. So the first thing I do for variation of parameters is to solve for the homogeneous equation. So to do that we're going to write out the characteristic equation. So that's going to be r squared plus 9 equals 0. So for homogeneous you're pretending that the right hand side equals to 0 and then the characteristic equation you plug in double prime is r squared. If there was y prime it would be just r and then this y term corresponds to just the coefficient. So we have this and then then we're going to solve for r. So that's going to be negative 0 because the y prime coefficient is 0 plus or minus the square root again of 0 squared minus 4 times a times c and then this is all over 2 so that's going to give us 0 plus or minus square root of negative 36 over 2. That's going to be a complex number so it's going to be 0 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 is 6i and again that's all divided by 2 so that gives us finally 0 plus or minus 3i. So the solution for this homogeneous equation is c1 e and then to the alpha t and alpha is 0 in this case so it's going to be just 0 t times cosine 3 which is the beta here t plus c2 e to the 0 t sine 3 t. So the first part is done now. Then to use variations of parameters, we're going to use this as a means to get the particular solution. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call these constants a function instead. So we're going to say that y of p is going to be something like c1t cosine 3t plus c2t sine 3t. And then what we need to do is find c1 and c2. So I'm not going to explain how you get this formula, but basically the formula is c1t, or c1 of t is the integral of negative y2 f of t over the Vronskin of y1, y2, and then c2t is the integral of y1 f of t over the Vronskin of y1, y2 again. So y1 and y2 refers to the parts of this particular solution. So so y1 would just be cosine 3t and y2 would just be sine 3t. So the first thing I think I'll do is get the Vronskin of y1 and y2 and by definition that's just y1, y2 for a 2 by 2 uh, matrix and then y prime 1, y2 prime. So that's going to be in this case y1 is cosine 3t and y2 is sine 3t. So the derivative of cosine 3t will be negative 3 sine 3t and the derivative of sine 3t is 3 cosine 3t. Then we're going to take the determinant of that, so we're going to multiply here, so that's going to be 3 cosine squared 3t minus, and then you multiply here, that's going to be negative 3 sine squared 3t. So if you simplify that, that's going to give you 3 cosine squared 3t plus sine squared 3t. After pulling out the 3, cosine squared 3t plus sine squared 3t equals 1, so then our determinant is just 1, so the denominator for this integral will just be 3. So let's just go ahead and plug in and solve for y1t first. So that's going to be negative sine 3t. Again, that's y2, so that's negative y2. Then f of t is the right-hand side of the original function, so that's going to be uh, this part is f of t. So f of t is tangent 3. Tangent 3t is sine 3t over cosine 3t, so I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that is sine 3t over cosine 3t and then the Vronskin on the denominator is 3. So that's going to be equal to, let me pull out the coefficient, 
that's going to be sine squared 3t over cosine 3t. And then you can rewrite sine squared 3t as 1 minus cosine 3t, 1 minus cosine squared 3t over cosine 3t, and then that's still negative 1 third and the integral of that. If you separate this integral into two parts, you're going to get negative 1 third times the integral of 1 over cosine 3t minus the integral of cosine squared 3t over cosine 3t. If we simplify that, that's going to be negative 1 third times this is secant, the integral of secant 3t, because secant is 1 over cosine, and then minus the integral cosine squared over cosine will just give you cosine 3t. And then when we simplify that, secant 3t, the integral of that is ln secant 3t plus tangent 3t, and then don't forget the coefficient inside, so that's going to be one third, and then this is all still times negative one third, and then this is going to be the integral of cosine is going to give you minus sine 3t, and again you have to remember the coefficient, so that's the integral. Then if you simplify that, you get negative one ninth ln secant 3t plus tangent 3t minus a negative, so that's plus 1 ninth sine 3t. And that's the solution for C1. Next we're going to do C2. So C2 is the integral of tangent 3t, so that's sine 3t over cosine 3t. The denominator of the Vronskin is 3, and then times y1, which was cosine 3t. So this integral is a little bit easier because you can cancel the top and the bottom. So that's just going to be one third the integral of sine 3t. So that gives you negative one third times one third cosine 3t. So that equals to negative one ninth cosine 3t. And now we're ready to write out the full yp, or particular solution. So that's going to be y of p equals to c1, which is this long thing. So negative 1 ninth ln absolute value of secant 3t plus tangent 3t plus 1 ninth sine 3t times cosine 3t plus c2, which is negative 1 ninth cosine 3t times, I think it was, yep, sine 3t. Sine 3t. So let's see if you can simplify anything. When you multiply this out, you're going to get cosine 3t times this whole thing, plus 1 ninth sine 3t cosine 3t, and then you're subtracting 1 ninth cosine 3t sine 3t. So this part will cancel out. So then you can simplify that as 1 ninth cosine 3t ln secant 3t plus tangent 3t, and that's your final answer.